Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel and today we're going to be doing a little bit of macro and close-up photography. Um, one of the things that, you know, spring is really beautiful. Uh, we get all these, uh, you know, leaves coming out and some of the early uh, blossoms as far as uh, quince and uh, azaleas. Um, some of them are very interesting to photograph and some of them create some other wonderful uh, things like backgrounds. So uh, what I did today was I went out and uh, took my camera and I'll show you uh, some of those images. Um, what I did was basically photograph uh, just bushes and flowers in the bushes, uh, azalea plants and uh, you know, the apple uh, blossom and um, you know other uh, plants basically that have a little color with some green and the really the intent behind this was to create backgrounds for some of the photography uh, that i'm going to show you so i took those and uh, you know here's a sequence of some of the background images that i photographed so what i do with these images is to print them out on uh, matte paper and then I'll uh, glue them with a little uh, spray glue and apply it to some foam core boards so that they remain flat and rigid. Um, because I'm going to be doing most of these uh, flowers and I'm going to photograph them indoors. So I don't have any natural backgrounds. I don't have any backgrounds that I can throw out of focus. So if I have out of focus backgrounds, I can use them for, uh, you know, my photography and, and it's basically like being in the outdoors. This really is what the background, this particular background looks like and uh, you know if I increase the exposure a little bit uh, you get an idea of you know it's pretty interesting it gives a nice green uh, background and I'll show you some images that I've uh, you know will capture with this. So uh, what I have is um, you know, I, I collected some plants and these are some uh, quince, uh, a little bit overexposed, so let me turn this light off. Uh, there's some quince over here, uh, then I've got some, uh, you know, maple leaves, I've got some uh, seed pods that were left over from last year. Uh, some other seed pods that have basically sprouted this year. So uh, there's a collection of those flowers. Then I have some, most of these are nothing more than just weeds uh, that grow in the garden, some little yellow buttercup-like. Uh, and then um, we'd planted some hosta and they kind of bloomed indoors at uh so there's there's some hosta here and then there is some azalea as you can see the azalea here so uh, th these are basically uh, you know what what i will be be photographing now uh, as far as my setup is concerned i have the panasonic s1r with the sigma mc21 uh, adapter and then I have the 150 millimeter f2.8 macro. It's a one for one macro IRIX lens. It's, it's a manual uh, focusing lens, which I love, uh, particularly for macro photography. And uh, I have a, uh, a lab jack here. And then I have this uh, third hand or third arm. Uh, it's, it's really a helper tool uh, used for, you know, soldering purposes, but I find this to be very convenient uh, to to clip on and hold plants and flowers and whatever else. Uh, the um, the jaws are a little bit uh, harsh, but uh, these plants have already been cut and brought indoors. They're not going to uh, really last, so you know, clipping them onto something like this is is not bad in this situation. Uh, when I'm out in the field and I'm photographing in the field and 
there isn't an abundance of plants, then I'll be very careful and not use anything that will damage uh, the plant or the stem. Um, typically, I'll use a product like a Wimberley plant with, uh, you know, a sponge-based uh, clip, which works perfectly well uh, for things like this. But uh, what I'll do is, you know, I'll, I'll, grab, I'll grab something like uh, the seed pod and uh, attach it to the, uh, the crocodile clip, as it's known as. And let me get the, the light on. So and then let me switch to the view of the camera that's going to be doing uh, the photography. So there's the seed pod, and basically what I want to do is to get the seed pod in perfect focus. And uh, in order to do that, I have the camera actually mounted on um, a, a, a rail, which is the Novaflex uh, Castell Cross Q. And basically it's a two axis uh, rail, um, which is, is fabulous for this kind of work. Um, you can actually move it in two axes, left and right, or back and forward. But uh, initially, to start with, all I've done is actually positioned this single seed pod um, so that I can capture it just as an individual seed pod. Now, once again, uh, as far as my settings are concerned, I'm at F13, oh, sorry, F14. Uh, one thirteenth of a second, everything is solidly mounted on a unique ball ball head uh, that is sitting on top of a Platypod Max, which is on uh, the, uh, the silicon pad to prevent it from slipping or moving. Uh, just to give you an idea, so that's, you know, the camera and the lens. Um, below is the uh, unique ball head. And if I just move this out of the way, um, you, you should be able to, let me just turn it and you can get an idea of uh, what I've got here. I'll slip it out and show you the, the Platypod uh, Max system, which is supporting the unique ball head, which is then supporting the uh, Novaflex uh, system. So once again, let's just get this thing repositioned properly. And in order to uh, get focus, I can either move the, uh, the subject or move the entire camera and lens system. What I have right now is the, um, the lens set to its maximum magnification, which is one for one. So the lens is in, at a one for one magnification. I have this little pod, seed pod over here, which I should, in fact, in this particular case, uh, get a slightly better angle on it and get some of those leaves in place. So I'm gonna tilt the camera down and possibly lose the one-for-one one magnification uh, by moving it back a little bit. So, And that's uh, you know, not exactly one-for-one. One. Uh, it's telling me that it's uh, one for 1.2 uh, as far as the magnification is concerned. The way I can tell you that is if I look at the, uh, the lens markings, it's uh, giving me uh, a marking between 1.12 and 1.15 over here. So it's about 1.125, uh, which is pretty good. I mean, it's not one for one, but in order to frame the subject correctly, um, this is really uh, pretty good for this subject. Now, I'm using a Lytra Pro as a single uh, light source uh, to uh, give 
the, uh, the, the light needed to capture this image. And of course, the background is nothing more than a printed background. Uh, the other thing I like to do is to use a remote shutter release. So um, this is the uh, Lumix uh, remote shutter release. It's a wired release, which works fine for uh, this kind of photography. And you know, grab the image. Um, that's one. I mean, I, I'll photograph uh, the other subjects and, uh, you know, show you a, a series of images. And then we'll get on to doing a really close up of the, the little yellow flower. And in addition, uh, we'll show how you can actually use some camera movement uh, to create some interesting uh, imagery. So that's going to be uh, after you see a series of images that I'll capture. I don't want to bore you with each image being captured, but I'll just show you those. So for this particular image, what I've done is I've taken this stem with these uh, quince uh, flowers and uh, positioned them, got them composed uh, in this diagonal. And then what I did was took one image with uh, part of the flowers uh, on the stem in uh, good focus. Using the uh, same exposure, but extending the shutter speed, so I adjusted the ISO to give me a longer shutter speed, but kept the, the rest of the exposure exactly the same. And in this time, because of the extended uh, shutter speed, I was able to uh, zoom in uh, to the flowers to create that zoomed effect. Then I brought uh, these two images into Photoshop as individual layers and then combined them and masked out some of the sharp area uh, to be superimposed on the area that had been created using the zoom effect. That's it. So here's another little, uh, you know, thing you can try. Uh, again, you know, any kind of intentional camera movement can be a lot of fun. Um, if you're just careful with it and, and make sure that it doesn't look so obscure that uh, nobody can make out what it is. For this uh, final image, what I have is I've taken one of those buttercups, uh, clipped the end, and used a little bit of uh, blue tack to uh, position it on this plate. And then what I've done is I've filled the plate with uh, milk and water uh, just to give it a, a nice background and a nice surface. Um, the flower itself is kind of drooping down uh, just about a little bit above the level of the water. And let me show you the view from the camera that I'm going to use to actually capture this image. So this is the, uh, the actual image that I'll be uh, capturing. So um, as far as the other settings are concerned, I'm using a foreground light, uh, which is uh, this uh, Lytra here. The camera that I'm using is the G9 with the 45 millimeter macro lens. Uh, the background that you see is uh, not even coming into play because I'm shooting down um, into the milk, which is basically uh, the background. Uh, this gives you a little overhead uh, view, and this is the view that um, I'll be shooting. So I'm going to capture this image. Uh, I'm not even going to bother processing it. Now you see a little bit of the green shading that is coming on the background uh, of the water. If I remove this backdrop completely, uh, that'll go completely white. So I think uh, that definitely is a much uh, better view. Uh, there's a small uh, shadow that is coming across over here, uh, which you can eliminate by uh, going up uh, a little higher with the camera or uh, repositioning the light a little bit 
but I kind of you know feel that uh, those those shadows are actually uh, complementing the image. Uh, definitely, an additional light source would uh, kill those shadows if I was to apply some additional light, uh, which I'm doing using a, a another uh, Lytra Torch 2, uh, just to throw some light into this foreground shadow. Uh, yes, the exposure does go up a little bit, so what I can do is take that exposure down. And actually, the flower has uh, drooped considerably, so um, I need to lift it up a little. That's not going to work. So time to reposition. So basically what I did was totally destroy the uh, previous uh, flower and I had to go back out and uh, pluck uh, another buttercup which I've done and uh, positioned it and uh, now we can uh, you know capture this image. The settings basically remain exactly the same and uh, hopefully uh, you know this will get captured as a photograph before it uh, wilts or uh, you know collapses like the last one did. And with that, we come to the end of this episode. I hope you've enjoyed it. And if you have, please give me a thumbs up. Uh, also, uh, you know, if you like what you see, please do subscribe. Uh, hit that notification bell to uh, let you know when the next episode is created. And in the meantime, uh, you know, be safe, be well, and we'll see you soon. Take care. Bye now.